It is an honor to have pastored you at Harvest Time Church for the last 22 years. And it was an honor uh, to be in Pollock Pines, California, and to pastor these wonderful people. It just shows you the depth of the love of Christ. That you cannot see someone for many years, and yet the love is there because of the reality of what God has done in our life. And um, I can't believe I wore those shorts, but you know. <laughs> Kevin, I told somebody the other day, I told somebody the other day, man, I miss my mullet. Wow. So this was a shock and a surprise to us. Cindy and I had no idea that uh, this was planned out. Sarah, would you stand? Where are you, Sarah? Bear, Bear would you stand? <laughs> So this young lady that um, God put into our life, the family itself, but she's my bear, and I've known her since she was just tiny, tiny. And um, well, she was tiny, <laughs> but um, we've just known this family for many, many years. And so Sarah, I guess, called Jen, and they just planned this whole thing and got everybody here. And so uh, we're we're blessed and honored. I don't know what to say, but. I think I'll preach. Is that okay? Yeah. Take your Bibles and turn to Luke chapter 4. Luke 4, 17. We're in a series called Staying in Your Lane. And uh, I have a two-part message. We'll start it today and then we'll finish it next week. We're uh, heading into the time of year and really, for us, uh, missions. Uh, missions are important. You saw what happened uh, with this mission and this ministry. God has allowed us now to partner with these people and reach the homeless. Uh, I just want to share just a, for a moment, God touched Ron Britton's heart uh, because of situation and circumstances that he's involved with his own family. And he wanted to do something. He didn't know what to do. And so his thought was to collect coats and uh, let's see if we can, you know, help those, the homeless and whatnot. And, um, Ron just uh, single-minded purpose and said, I just want to find a way to do something. And so he started connecting. Uh, he talked to uh, St. Vincent de Paul, and they put him onto, in fact, he met with the director of the St. Vincent de Paul for this whole area. And they were so excited that a church or that somebody, a, an organization, wanted to help, that they said, hey, we'll help provide codes. And I believe it was them that somehow uh, connected Tyler and then Ron and what God was doing and so this whole thing is just evolving it's still it's still happening it's still evolving but we believe that God has ordained this because how many know that that's the mission of the church if you ask a hundred people what the mission of the church is you'll have a hundred different answers if you ask a hundred pastors they'll give you each their own Jesus said in Luke chapter 4 and it was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah and when he had opened the book he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. And then in Luke chapter 9, And then he called his twelve disciples together, gave them power and authority. Everybody say power and authority. Power. Over all the demons and to cure diseases. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Father, we thank you for your word. Father, in the next few moments, would you anoint it, we pray in Jesus' name. And everyone said Amen. Amen. Christ's ministry was key to basic human needs. The gospel of Jesus Christ was a gospel of freedom. 
when we talk to people about ministry or when we talk to them about God, we need to understand that we're talking about relationship. Mm -hmm. Not only our relationship to God, but our relationship to humans in general, to the population. Because church, listen, the ministry of God, I believe, is about people. Man. It's always been about people. Mm -hmm. It's always been about relationship. When we understand that God is not just the God on the throne, but He's the God in our heart, we understand that we reach to people. Amen. We touch them, just like you saw in the video. God had moved on Pastor Vinny's heart many years ago to reach the lost, to go out to the homeless and say, nobody else might love you, but I do. Nobody else might pay attention to you, but I will. And then get them to understand that they have value and they have worth. Amen. So what are the church's priorities? Well, like I said, everybody has an answer, but I'm going to give you mine. Is that okay? <laughs> First of all, write this down. It's about matters of the heart. Amen. Luke 4.18. He has sent me to heal broken heart. Personal grief comes from shattered relationships, which the Holy Spirit seeks to mend. God has called us to love one another. And that's how people are healed. Amen. How many know we have broken hearts all the time? We lose somebody. We lose a loved one and our hearts are broken. Uh, marriage comes to an end and hearts are broken. We have relationship issues with uh, our children or, or, or someone else or a friend or whatever. And our hearts are broken. So how do we heal a broken heart? Well, we don't heal it, but God does. He knows how to heal a broken heart. Jesus said, I came to heal the broken heart. I came to touch them. There, there, is, a, there is a wall there. And Jesus said, I came to break the wall down. Amen. The church, listen to me. We can't do it unless we operate in his power. Amen. We have to be the ones. We're the ones to go out. Amen. We're the ones to touch people. We're the ones to bring hope and help and love. And we do that personally. You can't just send in your money. Somebody has to do it. Amen. Amen. Somebody has to touch somebody. I was talking with first service and I asked the question. If, if Tyler got up and said, Harvest Time Church, I, I love you all. How many know that that would ring shallow if you didn't know him or he didn't know you? So how do we make this real? Well, I asked the question, so I, I did it first service, I'll do it. Brianna, how do you know that I, do you think I love you? How do you know that I love you? It's the way that you guide me and you love my family, and that you're always there for me, you and mom with me. Okay, all right. I'm like, let's see, Kevin, I'm gonna pick on Kevin, because I have I get to pick on him. <laughs> Kevin, do you know that I love you as a friend? <laughs> oh, as a friend. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin's kind of funny. I walked up and he goes, you can hug me. Please don't kiss me. <laughs> <laughs> you got to know Kevin to appreciate that. <laughs> Kevin, seriously, do you, do you know that I care about you and love you? Oh, yes. yes. And how do you know that? You haven't seen me for years, but how do you know that? Um. You just show it through your actions. I could say off the top of my head. Okay. Cheryl, his wife. Cheryl, how do you do you know that I love you? How do you know that? Hmm? Um, probably the same thing. It's your actions. I don't know. Okay. Do you understand that we're talking about relationship? We're talking about how we treat one another. Somebody says, oh, well, I love you, and, and, and you you hear the words, but do you feel the effects of it? Right? I mean, Mike and Robin, we've known them for years and years, and we, we the, the great thing about it was we've been able to con connect with each other over the years and so on and so forth, and, and they know us, and they love us. And I know that because I know uh, not only what I feel, but what I see and, and how that love comes off, how it, how it ministers and heals. You say, well, pastor, I mean, I mean, you can't love everybody. But church, listen, God has called us to do exactly that. Amen. So how do I love everybody? First of all, God is love. Amen. 
He is the personification of love. He doesn't have love. He doesn't. He didn't produce love. He is love. Amen. And so when we understand that in matters of the heart, it's about relationship with God. In Ephesians 2, 13, Paul said, But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. The blood of Christ brings us together. Amen. Amen. I, I can tell these young people, young people, you know that I love you, right? How do you know that? Emma, how do you know that I love you? Because of the way I treat you and the things I say. Do you understand that that's personal? It's one-on-one. -on -one. It's not just in a group. It's not just, hey, everybody, I love you. I love it when the, when the singers or when the, the, the stars and musicians or whatever, they'll get up on in a concert of 50,000 people, love you all! No, you don't. <laughs> I love your money, how you've supported me, but I don't know you. How can I love those that I don't know? You say, well, pastor, how can we love the homeless if we don't know them? You saw Pastor Vinny call them by name. I had an awesome, uh, the other day I was just praying and then it was just going through personal devotion time and I felt like the Lord spoke to me. And so I wrote it down. And I don't have it up here, but in, in the essence, this is what God said. He said, Dennis, I love you. And I've called you by name. And that meant something. See, he doesn't just know about me. He knows me. Amen. He doesn't just have a recollection. He knows me intimately. And church, listen, when we know God, we can love like God. Amen. When he is in us, we can reach out to those and they know because they know because they know that it's real when we tell them that we love them. Yeah. But Pastor Benny also gives them insulin shots and provides food for them and gives them warm coats. How many know that's the best personification of love you can find? Yeah. How do we understand God? We do it because... In matters of the heart, our relationship with God is the only thing that really honestly matters. Amen. It's the first priority. What was the greatest commandment? Jesus was asked the question. You know the answer. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, all thy mind. And the second is just like it. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. When you give clothes to a ministry, that's loving your neighbor. When you call somebody up when they're sick and you pray with them, that's the love of God. People understand that. Not only are we to be in relationship with God, but with others. In Ephesians 4.30, Paul said, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Be at peace with all men if possible. Amen. I'm going to make a statement. I, I'm going to say this to you, and I need you to understand. You can't have peace with God unless you have also people, peace with people. Amen. Our peace with one another is predicated on God in us. But it's also predicated on the fact that God has said, look, if, if you have anger and judgment against someone else, then I can't forgive you. If you can't forgive them, then I can't forgive you. So our relationship with one another determines whether I make it to heaven or not. Amen. How do I know that I'm going? Well, Jesus said, if you love me, you'll obey me. Amen. You'll do what I ask you to do. And what I'm asking you to do, first and foremost, I'm asking you to love one another. Amen. Amen. I'm asking you to embrace people around you because there's no other way that they're going to know me unless you love them. Amen. 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 So we have these people, these wonderful people that came today and surprised us and shocked us. But I know them. And they know us and they love us. And we love them. God arranges that. God sets that up. 
God puts that in motion. Everyone that you come in contact with, the Holy Spirit has already gone before. He's already arranged it for you. Why is this important? Because church, listen to me. Relationship with each other, again, will predetermine where I end up. You say, well, Pastor, I mean, it's all about just loving God. Well, no, it's not just all about loving God. He said the second is just like it. Love your neighbors, you love yourself. Mm -hmm. If you can't forgive them, then I can't forgive you. You can't tell God that you love him and then hate your brother or your sister. Right? But church, why do we then think that somehow we can get away with the things that we do? We hurt. We, we, he said uh, uh, in another portion of scripture, James said you, you bite and devour one another. You have not because you ask God and you have not because you ask for the, for the wrong reason. But you may, may show it on yourselves. Bring it on yourselves. And he said, you bite and devour one another. You commit murder in your heart. You say, well, pastor, I've never murdered anybody. Haven't we? Have we ever tried to murder somebody's reputation? Have we ever tried to go and, and tell this group of people how horrible this person is? If we've done that, trust me, we've already committed murder. And church, when we understand that, God says, look, now I can begin to heal. Now I can begin to work because I, I've not only uh, got our relationship together here, but we've got it here. And then the third thing in that matters of the heart is the relationship with, with your past. 2 Corinthians 5.17, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Do you hear what he said? It's new. We were old in our old life. It, it, was, it was troublesome at best. And then Christ came into our heart and he created something new. Amen. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Amen. That means that my relationship not only with God is new, but I'm brand new. Amen. And Lord knows we need to be new. Because the old part is just killing me. My knees are falling apart. My shoulders falling apart. What are you going to do? Someday I'm going to get new parts. And they're not going to come from the doctor. Come on. Come on. Hurts of the past cause us to become bitter and resentful, opening the door to the enemy. You know what's crazy, church, is that God forgives us and then immediately Satan throws our past up in our face. And all we can see is our past. And he says, no, I, I've forgiven you of that. You, you've gotten rid of that. But listen to me. It's important that we understand we also have to let go of the past. Amen. It, God, how many in this room, raise your hand if God saved you from drug addiction, alcohol addiction, or, or something like that. Raise your hand. God saved you from that. Do you understand that he doesn't ever want you to go back into it? Amen. Amen. I'm going to say that again because that amen was just not powerful. <laughs> Do you know that he does not want you to go ever back into that? Amen. Hallelujah. God saved us from this and he doesn't want us to go back into it. Why is it that oftentimes, church, we kind of start fading back and we start reaching back for what God saved us from? God saved me from a life of addiction, of alcohol, or, or drugs, or, or whatever it is. There's, there's many other things. Why then do I feel the need to, to sink back into it? Could it be because I haven't fully forgiven myself? I haven't let go of my past. And so now I'm still dealing with the past in my present. Do you understand the past is the past and you need to let go of it so that you can face the future yeah. amen yeah. the future is my relationship with God in heaven forever amen, amen. It, it's as awesome as this reunion is that's going to be better yeah. how many have a loved one that has gone on before you that you can't wait to see the older I get the more I have 
The older I get, the more people I have that have gone on before me. We just recently, and you, many of you know, we just said goodbye to our friend John Muncy. I was talking with somebody the other day about that. What a heartbreaker. Yeah. What a heartbreaker. Two years ago, we said goodbye to Donnie Moore. What a heartbreaker. Yeah. We're separated for now. But one day, we'll be together. Amen. And here's the key. I want to make sure that I'm there. I want to make sure that, that the life that I live, the actions that I take here and now, will guide me and lead me to the place that I need to be. <laughs> the second thing, and I'll close with this, it's not just matters of the heart, but it's matters of the home. Luke 4, 18, he has sent me to proclaim deliverance to the captive. Homes are in chaos because people are captive by destructive behavior. The Holy Spirit can liberate us from that. Crippling addictions, alcohol, drugs, food, spending. We have 12-step 12 pro 12 programs in, in our churches now because it's hit the church. All of these things have made their way into the church, and we are the ones that are supposed to stand up. Amen. He, Paul said in Colossians 3, 5, Therefore put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of men. There's a reckoning coming. I said there's a reckoning coming. Right. And church, we're either standing on the right side or we're on the wrong side. Amen? Yeah. We either get, I tell people, we either get right or you get left. Yeah. You get right or you get that. You get in the right frame of mind, in the right heart, and obey God. And when you do, there's peace in your heart. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. You say, well, Pastor, that's easy for you to say, you're, just, you're a minister, you never sin. <laughs> right. Yeah. No. Let me tell you the truth. When I sin, not if, when I do, I immediately go to the Father and I ask forgiveness. Yes. Amen. One of my favorite scriptures is found in 1 John. Beloved, I write this letter to you that you do not sin, but if you do, you have an advocate. Amen. You have a, an attorney who stands in the gap for you. Mm -hmm. Just listen to me. We have an obligation. We have a calling. God has intimately called us to serve Him and love Him. And, and we can't do it half-baked. It's either all or it's nothing at all. I'm asking you, I'm begging you to allow the Holy Spirit to speak to your heart. I want you to bow your heads right now. We always do this in church. This is a churchy thing, so just, just go with it. We ask you to bow your head because we don't want to embarrass you. And it's nobody else's business but yours. Listen to me. What you do is between you and God. How you live your life, God has not called me to judge. Do you know that? Well, yeah, you're the pastor. You have to tell me what's right and wrong. No, I don't. The Holy Spirit does. That's his job. He's the one that convicts. Here's the problem when we try to convict somebody else. We're casting our judgment on somebody else. Oftentimes, with a log in our eye. And we can't see clearly until we get the log out of our own eye. Amen? Amen. So it's about what God thinks of you. It's not even what I think of you. I wondered how Pastor Vinny could kneel down to a homeless man who probably hasn't had a bath or a shower in weeks and put his hand on his head lovingly and say, Brother, we love you. And he knows it's true. That man knows it's true. It's the essence of the gospel. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son.
that whosoever might believe on him should not perish. I have everlasting life. How many in this room would just raise a hand and say, Pastor D, there's things in my life I know I need God to get out of. I need to take care of. Let me see your hands. Come on. Come on. Yeah. How do I do it? Church, you do it by surrender. You do it by surrender. If I go to your house and say I need your money, it's a command. You reach in, you pull out your money, and you hand it to me. You surrendered it to me. It's the same way with God. We come to the altar and He says, I want you to surrender. See, we all sin and fall short of God's glory. We had a wonderful, in our Christian education class today, in our video, Pastor Robert Morris was talking about bondage and how we get in bondage. He said, well, you can't be in bondage if you're a Christian. Sure you can. Of course you can. Hebrews chapter 13, 12 and 13 is faith after, but chapter 13, verse 1. Beloved, because we have so great a cloud of witnesses, let us surrender, let us let go of every weight in the sin which so easily besets us. And let us run with endurance the race. How many know you're all running a race? I said you're all running a race. Let's stand. For those of you guys that came that didn't know, when we found out that Pastor Cindy had uh, breast cancer, it was a jolt. We had Darwin Benjamin come about two weeks later after we announced that she had that. And he used her is his illustration. That God would touch her and heal her. And he said, I want to set a mandate for this church. Here's the mandate. That you start at the altar and that you finish at the altar until Cindy's healed. We said, yes, Lord. Okay. So I want to end at the altar today. But here's what I want to say. I believe that God is calling us to redirect our priorities as believers. There's all kinds of good things you can do. There's all kinds of wonderful ministries that you can be involved with. But the greatest ministry is to Him. Because it's about your relationship with Him. I shared it with you today. It's about our relationship to Him and then to each other. <clears throat> Amen. And not just matters of the heart, but matters of the home. As for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. My greatest prayer was that my boys would love Jesus. Nothing else really matters to me but that. Then I got grandkids. Then I'd start all over again. Now my greatest prayer is that my grandkids know Jesus. That's all I care about. That's all that matters to me. I would give up doing what I'm doing today if, if God would say, okay, I'm done with you and in exchange for that, I'll make sure that all your kids and your grandkids love me and serve me. I would be done with the ministry because that's my greatest ministry. It's my kids and my grandkids. Church, do you understand that, that our priority is Him first and it's us second? Amen. How many in this room would just join with me today as much as possible and say, Pastor, we're willing to sacrifice. We're willing to give. Not only our time, not only our talents, but everything we have.
We started at the altar. Let's end at the altar. If that's your heart, if that's your desire, if you'd say, Pastor, I want that in my life. I want that for my family. I want that for my kids. Come and join me right here at this altar. Come on. Come on. We'll fill the altar and we'll fill the aisles. name, Father, that they would love you and know you as the greatest priority in their life. That, Father, nothing else, literally nothing else would matter but that. All, all the things that we think are important, all the things that we think are, are, are life endearing, Lord, I, I ask God that you would change us. And Father, help our priorities to be that which needs to be. That we love you with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind. Nothing else matters. Lord, I thank you for Haley that found that out. That God, her heart, her desire is to serve you, love you more than you. Knowing, Father, where she's been, things that she's had to deal with in her life. Father, I thank you for the truth. I want everybody in this altar, I want you to lift your hands to the Lord and pray this prayer. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus I, surrender I surrender everything I have, everything I, have. Everything I need. To you, Jesus. I'm asking you today. Show me your power. Live in me that the world may see. Jesus Christ. Lord, I'm asking for my life to count for eternity. Help me to save someone. Help me to pray for someone. Help me to reach somebody this week. In Jesus' name. Most of all, transform me into who you need me to be. In Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for this. God, I thank you for these people. Father, I thank you for the truth you spoke to my heart this morning early and you told me Father you spoke to my heart and you told me to encourage them to love you and to treasure you Father I've done that and now Father receive us into your arms guide us every day of our life. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Listen. It's just about loving people. Loving Him first and then loving people. Amen. Amen. Sophia. Sophia is from Italy. And uh, she was a foreign exchange student about two years ago. And uh, she came back and she's been with Eddie and Vanessa now for several months. She's been going to school here. And, uh, and you felt the love from us. <laughs> but she also is understanding and learning what it means to have love Christ through us to her. 
How many know that not everybody understands what we do? Not everybody talks our language. I mean, if you've been in church for a length of time, you got the language down. <laughs> I mean, who, who in the world would understand what the word anointing means, right? But that's how we talk. And we just assume that everybody understands that. But guess what? They don't. Here's what Sophia knows. You know that I love you. You know that Eddie and Vanessa love you. That's what she knows. And church, we love her because of the love of Christ in us. And that's, that's why we love her. That and she's easy to love. <laughs> that's what I want you to do. Just go out and love people. Amen? Amen. Reach out to them. Show them the love of Christ. And you know what? The sky's the limit for what God can do at Harvest Time Church. Amen? Amen. Father, we leave today excited about what you're going to do. Lord, show us every day. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.